Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and this is an in-depth video on the NZXT Kraken Elite 360 RGB. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up, wire, and install the all-in-one cooler in a few different ways, including with, as you can see, the F360 single-frame fan, but also the standard fan, and I'm going to talk about the wiring and setup logic for AMD AM5 Intel LGA 1700 socket and front-mounting the cooler because this actually gives you the best cooling performance depending on the case you're using. So you can see it here in the NZXT H5 Flow RGB, for example, which I've got separate videos on. Now this is a 360 mil cooler with a pretty easy setup process. It comes with its own fans as standard, but you can swap those fans out if you want to create a uniform design throughout the case. You'll notice as you take it apart, that the cooler does come with pre-applied thermal paste, so you don't need to worry about applying the thermal paste to it. It has a protective cover on it, which I've taken off, but I would recommend not doing that until you're actually ready to build with it so that you don't damage that thermal paste because that can cause problems. It's also set up and ready for Intel installations, but can work with a variety of motherboards, including AMD AM4 and AM5 motherboards too. It's pre-filled with coolant, so you don't need to worry about filling it up and you just need to set it up, wire it, and install it in your machine. So I'm going to show you all the steps for that, the things that are included in here, and talk through all the wiring logic and more, as well as showing you how to set it up in NZXT's CAM software. And I'm going to cover all that and leave timestamps so you can leap to the relevant points. Now, it is worth bearing in mind where you're going to mount your 360mm cooler. This case isn't meant to be able to handle a 360mm, but it does fit at the top if you remove the rear fan. Most people might opt for a top mounting setup because it's the most straightforward. It does depend on the case though, and I've done a separate video testing to show the difference that it can make where you mount your cooler to the CPU performance and also to the overall performance of your system. So I found that front mounting can be superior, but top mounting is fairly straightforward. So I'm gonna start showing you the setup process for that and the thought logic for that if you want to do it. But you do want to think about test fitting the cooler first so you can get an idea of which way around the tubes are gonna go, where it's going to fit, and if you need to remove fans and other things before you install it. As you can see, I've had to in this case. The H5 Flow RGB isn't meant to be able to take a 360 mil cooler, but it does work, and I've shown this in the separate video. Now this cooler comes with a load of long radiator screws and then some smaller screws with washers that you'd use to secure it to the case. So here you can see it all laid out logically. What I'm going to do is use the long radiator screws to secure the standard fans to the rad. So with this logic, with the fans facing upwards towards you, like this, what they're doing is basically pulling air from that direction. So if we're top mounting the radiator, as I did in that demo, what this would be doing is pulling air from the case through the radiator and exhausting out the top of the case. When you're installing the fans like this, you need to make sure you think about the logic of where the cables are going to go. So the two cables that are coming from the fans, you need to make sure they're pointing towards the right direction so that when you install the radiator, it ends up with those cables facing towards the back of the case so that you can hide them away nicely. Then we put the radiator screws through the fans and into the holes on the rad, so you have to line them up with the pre-drilled holes in there and then secure them all so they're all screwed in nicely. Then with these fans as standard, you have two cables included on each fan. One is the fan power, which you can see looks like this, and that's a four pin fan power connector. And then the other one is an RGB connector. Now these are proprietary NZXT RGB connectors, which means they have to be connected to the controller that I showed you a second ago, or alternatively to an NZXT RGB and fan hub, which I'll show you in a little while. These cables cannot be connected directly to the motherboard, bear that in mind, but they can connect directly to the NZXT RGB controller that's included with the cooler. So all three of the RGB cables will connect here. This controller then has SATA power to the power supply unit and a USB connection to the motherboard, and that will then allow you to control the RGB lighting via NZXT's CAM software, which I'll show you at the end of the video. So the three RGB connectors come out of the fan and connect into this controller quite easily, or alternatively, you can plug them into the RGB and fan controller that you can get separately. If you're plugging in lots of fans, it makes sense to use that. And I'll show you that in a second. 
but this is the logic and the basic installation for the Kraken cooler. And then you have this breakout cable which plugs into the pump. You'll notice this has multiple connections on it which can look quite intimidating if this is your first time dealing with this. But this single connector here plugs into the top of the pump and then it has a load of other cables that need to be connected in various places. Because this is an all-in-one cooler, it basically does everything quite simply. So it requires power to this to power the pump, but also that power cable will help power the fans that are on the radiator. So you can see the cables laid out here. We've got USB connection goes to the motherboard, CPU fan connection goes to the motherboard, SATA power to the power supply unit, and then fan power. So this fan power connector, which has three connections on it, obviously allows you to connect the fans to the pump. This way, the fans and the pump are all controlled via NZXT's CAM software and communicate nicely with each other, and the fans can spin up to help cool the coolant inside the cooler and therefore help cool your CPU down. So the three power cables from the fans that I showed you a second ago plug into this breakout cable, which in turn runs to the pump, while the RGB connections run to the controller separately. Then both of these have a USB connection that needs to run to the motherboard. That's important. You need to make sure these are plugged into the motherboard so that you can get the control over all these things from NZXT's CAM software. Now, if you've only got one USB port on your motherboard, not to worry, because NZXT's included this splitter in the box, which enables you to plug both these cables into that. And then that single connection can plug into your motherboard at the bottom middle, and I'll show you that in a second. But this means that you don't have to worry about buying an additional controller, unless you happen to have other things that require internal USB as well. So this cable plugs in the bottom middle of the motherboard and the port's marked USB. You can see them here on a couple of different motherboards just to give you a demo of that and you might find you have one two or maybe three of these ports if you're lucky and you can just connect that cable up at the end but it is very important to make sure you do that now i'm going to show you the setup process for an am5 motherboard so this is for amd ryzen cpus and for this you're going to need these standoffs which are labeled in the box you'll notice it says am4 one way am5 the other this is an am5 motherboard so first you need to remove the clips at the top and bottom that are pre-installed on the motherboard this would be the same across most motherboards in my experience so just unscrew those two screws from there and get those clips out of the way and save them in case you need them in future. And then we'll need to seat these little plastic brackets over the top. So you need to make sure you're putting those the right way around. But for an AM5 setup, it'll be with the ridged bits at the top and then the other bit goes towards the bottom. And then you have these standoff screws here. Notice they're longer on one side than they are on the other. The long bit goes into the motherboard. So push that down into there and then screw that into the plastic standoffs we've put in place and secure those on the four corners there so that they're ready. This is basically how you're going to seat the CPU cooler down over the top of the standoffs and over the top of that bracketing. So it replaces the standard clips and this is a much better way of doing it. It's much easier than using those standard brackets as I've seen with other coolers. Now the cooler comes pre-bracketed with Intel. So you actually have to remove this metal bracket around the outside of the copper plate, first of all, which basically just twists off. So you just twist it one way and it will come off. And then you've got this AMD bracket instead, which you need to just slot over the notches and then twist back on so that's locked into place. And then this will seat down over the top of the CPU and secure over those screws that we've just put into place there. I'm showing you this outside the case so it's easy to see, but you'd actually do this when it's fully installed in the case. And then you put the thumb screws down over those standoff screws and secure them in the four corners there, securing them nice and tightly. And I'd recommend using a screwdriver at the end just to make sure they're tightened all the way up so it's fully seated. You need to take care not to over tighten it, but you need to make sure it's tight enough that it's got a good contact between the copper plate and the CPU. Then put the breakout cable in and the small little cable here plugs into the CPU header at the top of the motherboard, so the one marked CPU fan, plug that in there, and that will give you the least resistance in terms of BIOS errors and things like that, but that will help the motherboard understand what's going on with your CPU cooler. Plug that cable in there, and then you've got the breakout cable with all the other connections that I showed you. So the fan power cables will need to be plugged into it, the SATA power to the power supply unit, and I'll show you that later, and then USB connections. Now for an Intel motherboard, the setup's slightly different. So this is an Intel Z790 motherboard, 
LGA 1700 socket. So you take this back plate and you need to push the standoffs out to the four corners there. And this is going to go into the back of the motherboard. Now I like to do this during the motherboard prep before I install the motherboard in the case, but you can access the back of this through the case if you need to and put it in that way instead. But I just find this easier. So you put that through those four holes behind the CPU socket, push that into place gently there, hold it in that way round while you then flip the motherboard back over and then secure the standoff screws into it. So what we're going to do is use the LGA 1700 socket standoffs that are labeled here in this little bag. So open that bag up, you'll find these standoffs here, what they look like, you have a little ridge through the middle of them, for example, but they're the same length on either side. Take those, screw those into the back plate that we should have just pushed through from the other side. So they should screw in quite nicely. Make sure you screw them in nice and tight in all four corners. And this will help you to secure the cooler down over the top of the CPU and make sure it has good contact with the CPU and allows for good cooling. But you do need to make sure it's tightened. You might find there's a little bit of wobble in there, but don't panic because once you've got the CPU blocked down on top of it, it's not a problem because the weight of that and the thumb screws ensures that it's all nicely secured and there's no issues there as long as you tighten it up properly. With that done, what you want to do is then check and make sure everything's set up nicely and you can indeed fit the cooler in properly. This is worth sanity checking to make sure that the cooler will fit into the case nicely as you want it to with the fans on before you go ahead and try and do the rest of the build because you don't want to come unstuck there. You can see all the cables are running to the back nicely, the tubes can be on the left hand side not blocked by the fan at the rear and we can also ensure everything's going to seat in there properly. But I'm now going to swap out the fans for the F360 RGB core just to show you the process for how to do this if you want to make a uniform design throughout your case and you've got these fans already in the case in other places it makes sense to do it and you can if you want to so it is perfectly possible to do and this is the process for doing it. Obviously without the standard fans installed we're going to install the single F360 fan instead. Same logic though you need to make sure the wires going to face in the right direction and also that you're installing them in the right direction depending on how you want the airflow to go. So if we're doing an exhaust logic with the top mounted radiator then you put them this way with the fans facing towards you and the blades facing that way but you only need four screws. They screw into the four corners, so much easier than standard fans, and there's obviously only a single cable coming out of it as well, so in theory it's easier to wire, so this actually makes some sense, although it is an extra expense because you will need to buy this fan frame separately. Currently it comes with an adapter cable included in the box, which you plug the, the standard flat connector into, and then it has three cables coming out of it, a 5 volt RGB header that would connect to the motherboard, and then the proprietary NZXT RGB connector and the fan power connector. Use the same logic though, plug the RGB connector into the RGB controller and the fan power connector into the breakout cable on the pump head and I'll show you more of that later on. And once you've got the motherboard installed I then want to show you another option which is front mounting the radiator instead, setting it up as an intake radiator. From my testing which I'll show in the review this actually gives you better cooling for your CPU. It might not make much sense because some people will argue that it would be bringing warm air into the case but actually it doesn't. A single frame fan cools the radiator sufficiently and then you've got cool air being drawn from the bottom of the case with those other fans we've put on. This case obviously has a single frame fan as standard included with it but you could use the same logic as I've shown either with the pre-included fans that come with the cooler or with a single frame fan that you purchase separately or indeed other fans. So the idea here is to swap out the standard intake fans on the case with the fans you want to use or in this case make use of the front fans and pass the radiator screws through the case through the fans and into the rad. This secures the whole thing to the front and allows you to front mount the radiator. So you've got air being pulled through the front of the case, through the radiator, cooling the coolant down and then helping to cool your CPU. If you've got a case with good airflow with intake fans on the bottom, those will help cool your GPU and everything should be fine. And then you mount the cooler down over the CPU. So you put the CPU block down over the top there and then secure the thumb screws down over the standoffs that I showed you earlier on. Go corner to corner, opposite corner to opposite corner. Do that one at a time until those are secured. And then I'd recommend tightening them up nicely and using a screwdriver to make sure they're fully tightened so it's not loose because if it's loose it won't cool properly. And then you can adjust the tubes 
and plug in the cables. So don't forget we've got that breakout cable that comes out of the pump head that we need to plug in and you need to plug that in and then run the cables through to the rear. This is now a little bit fiddly to do because you've got to get it past the fans that are mounted at the top, which is worth bearing in mind. And don't forget you need to plug in the small cable to the CPU fan header on the motherboard while doing this as well. That will ensure the motherboard recognizes it as a CPU fan cooler in place and that that's set up and you won't get any complaints from the BIOS when you try booting your system up. The other cables need to run to the rear as well. Don't forget to plug in the SATA power and the USB connections, for example. Otherwise, you won't be able to control the display and the RGB lighting and the fans won't spin up as well because don't forget what we're going to do with that single frame fan connection. So that F360 single frame fan that we had on the front, we're going to plug that in to the breakout cable now instead of to anything else. So it's plugged into that breakout cable so that then it's all cooled nicely. Then you have a SATA power connection from the pump that needs to be connected up to the same cable that we'd use for SSDs and hard disk drives. If you have a spare one or use a second cable, plug that in and then that will make sure that the pump's powered nicely and the USB connection will ensure that you can control the display and everything else as well. Quickly, if you're not quite sure about this, the SATA power connection looks like this. So this is an NZXT power supply unit, but the cables look the same from all power supply units. Basically, you've got one connection that plugs into the power supply end and then a daisy chain cable with multiple connections on it, which has a flat L-shaped connector. Plugs into the peripheral and SATA port on the power supply unit and then allows you to plug in SSDs, hard disk drives and other things and includes the pump on the NZXT Kraken and the power for things like the NZXT RGB controller or NZXT RGB and fan hub. So it's a multi-use power cable. But you, you should find you usually have two of these included with your power supply, so plenty of power there. Another useful thing to buy, which is separate but additional purchase, is the NZXT Fan Hub. This gives you RGB and fan power and is worth using in place of the RGB controller that comes with the Kraken cooler. Because if you're mixing other NZXT fans into your system, this can control the RGB for six fans and the power for nine. So depending on how many fans you're putting in your system, this can be particularly useful for that. You might want to combine it with the RGB controller, but it is worth thinking about. I've done a full wiring guide on various different NZXT fans that I'll link to in the description to explain these things in a bit more depth. But I'd recommend considering this as an additional purchase that'll make your life easier. You can use it at the rear of the case to plug in a variety of fans and I would recommend for example plugging in the Kraken's RGB power cables to this but keep the power connected to the breakout cables so the RGB connectors can plug into this for your whole system for all the fans there but the power for the pump and the pump fans just keep them connected as I've shown you earlier on that will make life a little bit easier. But this thing is very useful because it has breakout cables as well, so you can use other system fans in it, which means that you can plug in the power for nine fans nice and easily to it, and then set them all up. It does require a USB connection and SATA power, so it needs to be connected to your motherboard and to your power supply unit, as I've shown with other devices in this video. But otherwise it's fairly straightforward, and then you can control the RGB lighting and fan speeds of the things you've connected to it via NZXT's CAM software, which makes life pretty straightforward and it makes for easy management of the RGB rather than having multiple RGB controllers at the back, for example, which means that you can neaten up your case. So as I said, single frame fan connection goes into the pump head, but the RGB connector can connect to here and then that sets up your system ready to be used quite nicely. Assuming you've connected everything properly as I've shown you, you should find that when you turn your PC on, the fans light up white and the display shows you the liquid temperature and the NZXT logo on it. Make sure USB is connected and SATA power if these things aren't happening. Then you just need to go and download NZXT's CAM software. CAM will give you control over the display, the RGB lighting and obviously over the fan speed and other things too. You can download this and you can go through various different profiles and change all the fan lighting quickly and easily from the lighting section. And you can also tweak other things like the display. 
You'll see in the cooling section you can choose from various different modes including silent performance modes. You can do the fans individually or as a whole group, assuming they're all connected together properly as I've shown you to the fan controller and to the pump. You can control everything really easily from this software. In the lighting section you can choose from a variety of different lighting effects that will either apply to the entire lot of fans or can be set individually so you can change the lighting there and you can customize this if you want to you could set different fans or different lighting and depending on the fans you can also adjust them individually and you can adjust the brightness levels as well so there's lots of different lighting options in there that you can see you can choose from quite easily in terms of the display on the Kraken, if you click on that, you can then change to other things. So it's standard set to single infographic. I quite like the dual infographic, but you can go for like carousel, for example, which then cycles through a variety of different things. You can set a GIF on there. You can set the infographics. You can change the duration of how long it spends on each of them. You can go for a clock. You can get various different readouts on there for your system as a whole which is a really nice way of doing it i like this pump because you basically have that display on there constantly give you an easy at a glance readout for your temperatures and the load for example you can also just have a straight clock on your display if you prefer so there's choices in there you can switch between those and adjust that and customize the end result of what you're getting on there or you can choose other things now i personally like to have the setup with display of what my temperatures are, but you can also choose photo slideshow. You can get NZXT YouTube videos on there. You can use these custom ones that have been set up by other people. So there's various different options in there to choose from. Hopefully this has given you some good insights into it. I'd recommend playing around with the display that allows you to put a GIF in the background so you can have a nice little video image there if you want to. But you can really customize this case quite a lot. Now, I realize this has been a really long video, so if it's helped you out, let me know in the comments down below or tell me what I could have left out if you'd referred. Hopefully, the timestamps have helped you leap around sufficiently. And don't forget to check out the links in the description to other related videos that might also be useful and give you insights into things like the fan wiring and the setup of other coolers in the case and other things like that too. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Thanks very much for watching. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video, you absolute legend. You've made it right to the end, and so you must have enjoyed it. Hit that thumbs up and give me a subscribe if you haven't already. Drop me a comment if you've got any questions, and check out these videos that I've linked over here, because you might find them really useful or interesting or relevant. Have a great life.